So which is better for treating menopause symptoms? Oral estradiol, like tablets or capsules? Or is it transdermal estradiol in the form of creams or gels or patches? I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I've earned multiple certifications about hormone replacement therapy. Hundreds of hormone doctors all over the US, Canada, even the UK, trust me to teach their patients about hormones. Well, the research about symptom relief is pretty clear. Either oral or transdermal estrogen will work great for a lot of symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, weight gain. But if you do a Google search for oral versus transdermal estrogen, most of the results of that search lean toward transdermal estrogen is better than oral. The first result says VTE or blood clot risk can be considered the clearest and strongest clinical difference between the two administration routes, supporting the transdermal as safer than oral. A headline from CNN says, oral estrogen only use riskier than patch or vaginal cream for menopausal women, study says. The journal Menopause says it is clear that women with increased risk for VTE, stroke, and CVD have a safety benefit when estrogen is administered transdermally as opposed to orally. WebMD says because estrogen cream is absorbed through the skin and goes directly into the bloodstream, it's safer than oral estrogen. A post by Dr. Pam Smith, who's a well-known hormone expert, says the overwhelming evidence has shown that oral estrogen replacement increases the risk of VTE in postmenopausal women with no previous thromboembolic events. So, case closed. Transdermal estrogen is better, or at least safer than oral estrogen, right? Is that really true? As with everything in the world of menopause, though, the devil is in the details. If we dig a little deeper into the research, we're going to discover three specific details. Detail number one, oral estradiol is a lot less likely to increase blood clots than something called conjugated equine estrogens, which come from horse pee. Many discussions about oral versus transdermal estrogens fail to recognize that different oral estrogens have different risks. Detail number two, oral estradiol has been shown to reduce heart disease risk, especially if it's given early in menopause. But the evidence isn't nearly as strong for transdermal estrogen and heart risk. The number of women potentially affected by heart disease is absolutely gigantic. Detail number three, Blood clots, especially in the legs and the lungs, can be life-threatening. They're a very serious problem, but they usually only affect women with either a history of blood clots or some genetic clotting risk factors. The number of women who fit in that category is extremely small. Different estrogens behave differently. Let's take a look at that detail first. In this retrospective study of 36,061 women, the women that received estradiol plus oral micronized progesterone, those are bioidentical hormones, those women had a 30% lower risk for blood clots than women taking conjugated equine estrogens plus medroxyprogesterone. In this study, researchers found that oral conjugated equine estrogen users had double the risk of blood clots when compared to women taking oral estradiol. In the conversation about oral versus transdermal, it's really important that we clearly understand the differences between different estrogens that are taken orally. This same study also compared oral CEE with oral estradiol in terms of heart disease risk. The CEE patients had higher heart risk than women taking estradiol. Oral estradiol has a huge benefit as far as risks are concerned. The study I just mentioned hints at that benefit a little bit. Several studies show that oral estradiol, especially when given early in menopause, can significantly reduce the risk for heart disease. One study is called the Early versus Late Intervention Trial with Estradiol, abbreviated ELITE. The ELITE study showed that oral estradiol therapy was associated with less progression of subclinical atherosclerosis, that's hardening of the arteries, than was placebo when therapy was initiated within six years after menopause. The Danish Osteoporosis Prevention Study reported this. After 10 years of randomized treatment, women receiving hormone replacement therapy, which happened to be oral estradiol, early after menopause, had a significantly reduced risk of mortality, 
heart failure, myocardial infarction, without any apparent increase in the risk of cancer, venous thromboembolism, or stroke. Did you catch that? The Danish study showed when women using oral estradiol didn't have any increased risk of heart attacks, blood clots, or stroke. These two studies are pretty good evidence that oral estradiol makes a really big difference in heart risk. But we don't have any studies that are that strong about transdermal estradiol reducing heart risk. That may have something to do with the positive impact that oral estradiol, but not transdermal, has on blood lipids. Here's a small study that showed patients taking oral estradiol had improved blood lipids. It's kind of a part of cholesterol, like apolipoprotein B or APOB. I've done a whole video on that. Patients taking transdermal estradiol didn't have any benefits for their APOB or other cholesterol biomarkers. Let's go back to that first study that I mentioned and dig into the numbers on that study just a little bit. Table 1 from that study lists blood coagulation defects, clotting disorders, along with hemophilia and other diseases that are related to blood clots. If you add all those up and look at the number of patients affected, we get about 0.4% or 0.5% of the women in the study who are likely to get blood clots. But take a look at how many women in that study have heart disease. 34.3% of women taking oral estradiol and progesterone had heart disease. 43.8% of women taking oral CEE and medroxyprogesterone had heart disease. Heart disease in this study is about 65 to 88 times more prevalent than blood clot issues. The number of women that should worry about blood clots is pretty tiny when compared to the number of women who should be concerned about heart disease. The bottom line about which is better Oral versus transdermal estradiol is, well, it depends. This is where the idea that one size fits all just doesn't work. If somebody makes a claim that transdermal estradiol is the only safe option, well, you might want to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. They may have some reasons for saying that. But I work with lots of providers who regularly prescribe oral estradiol to their patients They recognize the risks of oral estradiol in certain patients, but they also recognize that the number of patients who should be concerned about that is pretty low. That's why I strongly recommend finding a hormone optimization specialist, somebody who really knows what they're doing with hormones. An experienced, trained provider understands how to evaluate your blood clot risk and your heart risk to help you decide the hormone replacement therapy, the dosage, and the dosage form that's best for your particular situation. A hormone specialist understands the nuances of long-term risks, as well as the best ways to treat your symptoms. If you'd like to find a qualified hormone optimization practitioner near you, visit my website at simplehormones.com slash referral. I know some providers that I might be able to connect you with. I can't guarantee that I know somebody in your town, but I'll give it my best shot. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and ding that little notify bell to find out when I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again next time.